Dr. Carrie Smith is an associate professor in the Des Moines University Department of Physical Therapy and the manager of the DMU Physical Therapy Clinic, who serves patients of all gender identities with trauma-informed care. She is a board-certified clinical specialist in women's health, pelvic physical therapy, and is board certified in biofeedback for pelvic muscle dysfunction. Dr. Smith graduated from DMU with a Master of Science degree in physical therapy in 1998 with a Doctor of Physical Therapy degree in 2004. Dr. Smith teaches on wellness and health promotion and has a passion to keep people moving throughout the lifespan. All right, welcome Dr. Smith. Thank you. Okay, I think this is on. So today, um, like she said, is that we're going to talk about being functionally fit. And my passion is to help you live your best life. And of course, being a physical therapist, I think that that includes a lot of movement so that you can continue to do all the activities that you want to be able to do in life. So we're going to start off by um, sharing what my motto is. Um, my motto has always been training for life. People would ask, so what, what exercise plan or what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just training for life. I've said that for many years. And so that's going to change throughout your lifestyle or throughout your lifespan. So as a child, I was, I'm the youngest of four. And so living on the farm, my training for life was like, could I lift the feed buckets and to take them over to feed the calves? Right, And then as I did that activity over and over, I could finally get where I could lift one and a half on each side. I was so strong. I felt like I was like had conquered the world by being able to do that. Granted, my brothers and my dad were always doing two on each side. But that's what I mean by functionally fit, that that's what I needed to do in order to be able to do my activities then. As a child, another activity example would be that I was practicing jumping, of course, for sports and for volleyball blocks and all of that. But again... On the farm, if I could jump on my horse out in the pasture, then I could ride bareback instead of having to like walk, go out there, put the halter on, and then walk them all the way in from the pasture. So that was kind of my functional activity at that point. So as I, as I grew and came to Des Moines University for physical therapy, which I'm a proud alumni, and I've worked here for 19 years, so um, I'm very purple and proud. <laughs> and... Uh, that I got into a new group of people, and it wasn't my family that was active, but all of my friends. And so we, were, we got into more activities like running 5Ks and, and being active with other activities like um, half Ironmans. And so that became kind of my lifestyle and keeping up with my family. My, my boys, were, we like to go hiking. And so I never want the, to be like staying at home because I can't do what everybody else is doing. So that's kind of what my motivation is for training for life. And it's kind of changed. And I challenge you, what activities do you want to be able to do? What are your goals now that you want to continue to be able to do the rest of your life? Or what maybe are you having a hard time doing that maybe we can work towards and to kind of be able to get up um, maybe it's to get off the floor to pick up a grandchild. Um, for my mother-in-law, I know we worked through with her, um, much to my um, uh, dis disagreement, they got her a lift chair. And, and so what happened by not using her muscles, all of a sudden she couldn't get up from the couch. And what a horrible thing is to go to the bathroom and not be able to get up from a toilet sometimes, to have to text your, your husband to say, can you come and help me get up off the toilet? And so I want you to think about what activities are you doing now that you want to continue to be active doing, and that's what we're going to kind of focus on. So our overview for today, we're going to work on what is functional fitness. We're going to talk about that and the importance of physical activity throughout the lifespan, and then we get to do a little active adult experience. And I have two of our wonderful students that will graduate in May. Maddie is just finishing up a, a rotation with us, and she will move on next week. And we get Katie uh, starting Monday. And then Jane is the one that works in our clinic, and she will be helping with the exercise classes, and so she'll be up on stage here soon. So functional fitness. So that's more of moving the whole body, not just individual parts, not just working on 
only your bicep curl, but can you do a squat? Because usually you're picking up the groceries or you're lifting something. So you're doing a squat with a bicep curl or reaching overhead, moving around in your environment. So it's moving the body in many different ways. And so, of course, we know that that improves strength, power, balance, stability, endurance, coordination. There's so many benefits to it. Um, and it's unique to each person, right? Your functional activity is going to be different than mine. And maybe yours is different than your children. So it, it's whatever you like to do that gives you joy. And so that's the important thing is that we understand some people might have a knee problem. Maybe they're... Um, hips don't bend as far that they can't get down on the floor, well, maybe we have to provide a little option or a little modification, and that's okay. And along with our interests being different, maybe our bodies are also different. And so that's okay. We can kind of modify that to make it um, what's unique to you. So we know there's many benefits of movement. I don't have to read the slide because you should already know that there's improvements in strength and endorphins, the happy hormones. We feel better after we move. It improves our sleep um, and improves our mental, uh, uh, our mental state, so decreases anxiety and depression. And there's new research that shows how it decreases that cognitive decline. And so in another example of the benefits of movement, this is my mom and my son, and my mom has um, been staying at home. And during COVID, it was horrible. Of course, much like a lot of people, we just weren't moving. Well, my niece got engaged. And so then she loves to dance. So that was her unique movement is to learn to, to stay active to dance and to be able to go to Salt Lake to that wedding. So she knew she needed to be going up and down our steps. And so it started off with one time a day. By the end, she was going up and down the steps three times, twice a day to keep up her strength. Very functional, very, very uh, great activity to, to do. But then she was working with her caregiver of dancing. And there's many different ways that you're dancing, right? Sidestepping, forward, back. So what great balance activities. But she had fun with it. And so the great thing is, well, maybe not so great. But COVID allowed her to work on that for two years instead of one because the wedding got postponed. But hey, that she kept her active, and boy, did she ever have a great time at that dance. She was active and dancing with anybody that would get on the dance floor with her. But I hope you can find something like that, too, that gives you the motivation to keep moving. Okay, so here's the 2018 Physical Activity Guidelines. And so those are the guidelines that the um, World Health Organization has put out, and then the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services have also adapted those. And so we all know that the minimum amount of activity that we should get per week is 150 minutes. So basically 30 minutes, five times a week. With these new guidelines, you no longer need to have a 10-minute continuous bout of exercise because we want to just keep people moving. So even just, that's with all of our Fitbit watches and Apple watches, even just moving one or two minutes at a time adds up to our total minutes of activity. And we also have added that we must have muscle strengthening. And that's very, very important to continue to build our bones and have, um, especially as we start to age and we start having that decline in the bone mineral dens density or some osteoporosis. The other big thing that came with the 2018 guidelines are the, the motto, move more and sit less. Because our sedentary activity has increased so much that that has become one of our one of the guidelines. So in that move more, sit less, we know that sedentary behavior increases all causes of mortality, and it increases our. And if we have cardiovascular disease, there's even more mortality, um, along with just having an increase in cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, and cancer of colorectal, um, endometrial, and lung cancers. So basically, I don't know if this will show. Yep, it does show. So basically, this graph is that if you sit a lot and don't move, you're at a high risk. There's an inverse relationship. So you're at a very high risk of having those sedentary risks, um, behavior uh, risks of mortality and cardiovascular disease. If you're like some of us that have office jobs or maybe a students, you might sit a lot. But if you have a lot of moderate or vigorous activity, you can move yourself from that red zone back over here to the green zone. 
So that's why that 150 to 300 minutes of activity is very important. So you can decrease your risk with that activity. If you sit, if you're very active at your job, um, but do not get any like continuous, moderate, or vigorous activity, you're still in that kind of orange yellow risk factor here. So that's why it's really important to realize, depending upon what your daily activity is um, or what your job is, that that sedentary activity is definitely um, a risk factor. But we can move out of it. That's the important thing. So with that move more, sit less, again, a time for self-reflection, how many hours a day do you sit when you might consider your commute time, your work time, your meals, your sitting at ball games, sitting at um, watching TV or other things? And so when you start adding all of those up, a lot of uh, the research is showing that we're sitting 9 to 11 hours a day. And since COVID, that is even worse. And the greatest, the, the group that is increasing in their sedentary activity the most is adolescents. So I know that a lot of you are active, older adults, but I'm sure you have loved ones that are children or grandchildren. And so I think that that's very important. But if you think about it, they're not only in school, but their leisure activities are no longer going out and playing in the backyard. They connect with their, with their friends through video games, through social media, through their phones. And so they sit, they don't have to go to the neighbor's house to go play with their, or talk to their kid, their friends. They just do it all through their electronic devices. So they are sitting more than ever before. You, if you are still working, think about your current workstation. What type of activities can you do more in a standing position? Because if you're standing, at least you're kind of shifting weight. You've got weight bearing through the bones. So there's a lot of activities with that. Um, and can you take breaks and go deliver a piece of paper or deliver a message in person versus sending that email and just to kind of mix up your day? Um, another, another solution to decrease that sedentary time is just to get that moderate or vigorous activity. And so I know that for my um, job, I definitely get up in the morning and do my exercise in the morning, especially if I have kind of an office day or an academic day where I'm sitting all day. And so that's very important for me just because um, my body likes movement. And um, so you can kind of reflect on your day and how maybe you can increase some movement into it. And it doesn't have to be considered exercise. It can just be movement. It can be walking down the hall. It can be stretching. It can be doing many different things while you're working. Just a quick review again, those physical activity guidelines. So adults, 150 to 300 minutes, and then uh, strengthening activities twice a week. Um, if you are a step counter, that's about 7,000 steps a day. Um, with older adults, so if you're over 65, then you, it's the same guidelines and you add in a balance component. So that's kind of important that we need to work into a balance to maintain our decreased risk of falls. And for children, it's 60 minutes of that moderate to vigorous. So moderate to vigorous is you're kind of breathless, okay? It's not just like shopping and walking down the hall. It's like you're getting your heart rate up, especially the vigorous, which you don't need, a, you need about half that amount of time if you're in that vigorous category. But um, so we need to realize that for children, it's not only just like kicking them out and they're, you know, walking the halls at the mall, but that they need to get their, activity, their heart rates up to make that, um, that guideline. And then preschool, it's three hours a day of physical activity. So those are, those are some good um, guidelines for us to follow. And here are all the benefits. I know it's a busy slide because that's the purpose. There's so many benefits of activity, right? It's, and the good thing is, is that the most recent literature is saying that it also decreases or lowers our risk of cancer for um, the, the starred ones or the new ones that they have found, the bladder cancer, endometrial, esophagus, kidney, lung, and stomach are the new developments that we know that exercise decreases those risks. Again, we talked about improved cognition and decreased uh, risk of dementia, along with that fall-related injuries for the older adults. But uh, I think it's, you know, within the first episode, it improves your sleep, improves your mood, improves your anxiety and depression. Those are all really good things that we need to work on, um, especially in our post-COVID world that we're living in. But if you look for, uh, for the benefits of youth, 
They also have the increased um, bone health, cardiorespiratory fitness, uh, weight status, but again, improved cognition and decreased risk of depression, which that is a huge public health concern with the amount of depression that we have in our youth. And so it can also improve their performance in school with that cognitive ability. So comes back to you. How will you begin training for life? What is it that you want to do? Is it to be able to play with your grandchildren, go play um, golf, get up from the chair? Um, so just kind of a, a nice time to kind of reflect about what's training for life for you. And uh, then we're going to start that. We're going to go ahead and go through um, kind of an active adult functional fitness. So this is where my helpers will come up. So we have a couple of different options. We're going to have Jane. I'll switch this to the other camera view. Mm. So I might have to... Let me get my preset here for the camera, and then I'll go back to the, to the presentation. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Maybe zoom in a little bit. We're getting pretty fancy with our technology here. There you go. Okay, perfect. So we will show um, that, and let me get the presentation up again so we can show what we're going to do. Okay, from slideshow. So with our fitness programs, generally we have kind of a little bit of a warm-up period, probably five to ten minutes of cardio, a little bit of balance, and then a, a greater amount of strength training. We're just kind of going to show you, and you're going to participate. So um, you can go ahead. We can, we'll demonstrate seated. If you feel more comfortable staying in your chair and just doing it seated, we'll do it that way. Or you can go ahead and stand up. And if you, you can use the chair for balance or your table for balance, we've got some um, fabulous helpers if you have questions or you need a modification for your body. So just to kind of warm up, if you're standing, you can just start by marching because you've probably been sitting long enough you need to move. You can start by marching or you can kind of just do like knee to chest if you're sitting at home and uh, following Jane's lead is a better example, then that's fine. So we're going to march. Let's go ahead and take those knees in and out a little bit, kind of warming up and working that hip mobility. And again, if you need balance, that's fine. If not, you're working your balance right now because you're moving through space. And you can try to go from outside to inside. And your mobility might be different than your neighbor's, and that's okay. All of our bodies are unique, right? Good. Okay, so this is a good one. We're going to go to toe touches. So Jane's going to just kind of reach down and to touch her toes and to kind of stretch her back. All of you guys can do a bigger, uh, maybe even do like a triangle, like you're going to touch your toe and then come back up and touch the other toe. So you're kind of stretching your back and your legs, just warming up a little bit. If you have dizziness problems and going back and forth is bothersome to you, it's fine. You can modify, maybe just rotate Standing up. There you go. Just kind of doing a little bit of stretching. And then let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just do a little rotation, kind of getting those, uh, getting your back kind of warmed up a little bit. And again, if you have dizziness, feel free to keep your head and looking straight ahead instead of turning your head back and forth or you can kind of focus on something and just turn your body. Good. Okay, so kind of just a little bit warmed up, got the body moving a little bit. So now we're gonna go into cardio. And again, we can modify. So um, sitting down modifying might be a little bit harder, but um, you can probably just like kick your legs back and forth if you're sitting. Um, otherwise, we're gonna do what we call butt kicks. So you're just gonna bend your knees and try to kick from the back. And if you want to get your arms into it, you can pull back. And if you're really energetic and you want to get a little bit more uh, activity here, you can do it like you're running. Except 
for this doesn't really like. <laughs> but you can kind of do like a running butt kick. There you go, getting that heart rate up. We can take it to jumping jack. So we're just kind of gonna go back and forth. So here's that modified. Or you can go ahead and to do the real jumping jack. You can just go here. And the benefits of a jumping jack are great. We're loading the joints. And so that's really good for those bones who need to have that loading to kind of decrease that osteoporosis. Good job, we're getting that heart rate up a little bit. Let's go ahead and twitch to a squat, whatever's comfortable for you, and then an overhead reach. So squat to overhead reach. If you wanna get crazy, you can even go up to your toes. Good. So these are complex movements. We're moving our full body, getting that heart rate up. And in our classes, we kind of do a little bit more interval. We might do one exercise and then kind of do a strength training, kind of back and forth. But I can guarantee you're gonna feel better by the end, right? Good. All right, and then you can do, um, well, when I did this, it was snowing out. So we could do cross country, where you're kind of moving big arms, one arm back and forth like a cross country skiing. Or, you can get into like a little extra jump in there. And like Jane is showing, you can do all of these just sitting in your chair too. So no matter your age or your ability, you can be active. If you hurt your shoulders, don't go as high. Good. And Last, we'll do circle arms, and then we'll come back to speed skaters. So this is kind of our cardio section. So I feel like I'm the only one that's breathing heavy. I don't see any of you guys breathing heavy. <laughs> this is why when I teach an exercise class, I don't use a microphone. <laughs> and backwards. Good. Nice job. And again, if you wanted to do a speed skater, that's kind of going through different motions. We'll do one more kind of cardio. And you can reach down if, you've, if, if that works for you. Or you can just work on more of your um, arms reaching. And so the other thing is, is you're just moving in many different planes of movement it's not just straightforward with walking, right? So to keep our balance, we have to work many different ways. You can add a little hop and a jump in there to make that a little bit more impact, if you wish. Good job. And to challenge the gentleman in the back, try not putting that foot down, and then it's a balance. <laughs> there you go. Very good. So now we're challenging everybody. Okay. So that's our warm-up and our cardio. So we'll take it down a little bit to work on our balance. So I think some of you might need a chair in front of you just for balance um, to support. And if you do need that, I would say to touch with the least amount. So maybe it's just one finger versus always having a whole hand on there. If you need to, just touch with one finger. If you need to, maybe two fingers. But trying to do that single leg, and you're working on your balance. And some of you are already mastering that, so you can try to close your eyes. Nice job. You can focus on something in front of you, thinking of that tripod foot, so your heel and both sides of your foot are down and kind of lifting that arch up so you have that yoga kind of posture with your foot and you're really balancing. And you can go ahead and switch to the other side. And again, whatever's the right position for you, it can be just standing here, can be holding on, can be eyes closed. We can add head rotations. And that puts another little challenge too as we are looking in different ways 
kind of scanning our environment kind of challenges us too. And you can look up and down, and I can ask the question, are you loving all of this movement? And you're saying, yes. <laughs> yes, Dr. Smith, I am. <laughs> Good. So those are easy things you can do as a part of an exercise class. You can integrate it into your life. So it's not like just an, uh, a class once a day or a couple times a week. Can you do this while you're waiting for your toast to come up, while you're waiting for your coffee to brew, while you're brushing your teeth? So try to think about what activities were you, was that difficult for, or which one was the most difficult, and try to integrate that into your day. Like starting tonight and tomorrow, right? Don't wait till, oh, I'll do it January 1st next year. <laughs> so the other thing is we can start getting a little bit more challenging. And so if you have a chair in front of you, I can demonstrate. Yeah. So if you have a chair in front of you or a table, that can be um, kind of protective so you don't fall. And you can reach forward. How far forward can you reach? And you're going to go up onto your toes. Your little toes are working really hard and trying to reach and then come back up. And you can kind of do that as an exercise. Or if you're reaching up into the cabinet, and how far can you reach to get that glass or get something off the shelf? So you can practice those activities because you can, you're using your toes and you're using a lot of those muscles that can kind of help you with that. That's actually a standard test that we do. It's called the, the, the standing reach test where you're trying to reach forward and back. So that can be something that you kind of do for balance or, or can challenge each other to do. Um, a side lunge, because we are a lot of times going to the side and then pushing back up. So even doing that, and can you push up so you're really pushing with that leg back, and can you keep your balance? And if that's easy to touch back, of course the challenge is can you come up and hold it? So can you side lunge and come up and hold it before you go back down? Nice job and come up and hold. It's kind of in integrating a little bit of strengthening, but it can be just a little tiny step and then coming back. Yeah, good. How, how is that leg compared to the other side? Good. Yep, and come up and hold and balance using your core. Now we really are going to get into some yoga. And so that tree pose. And so the first option, you can hold on to the chair again if you need to. Or if you're okay without, you can have your toe right kind of, kind of uh, balancing on the floor and just your heel on your leg. So that's kind of another modified and not touching. If you're good with that, go ahead and put that foot on your, on your calf muscle. Um, we just don't want it right on your knee, so either below or above the knee, and you're gonna hold that. Or if you're a real yogi, you're probably all the way up here. Um, I see some people that are doing a great job with that. So if you have it here, go ahead, take your arms up, and that's gonna challenge you. Or how about, instead of just a tree, how about a windy tree? And you're going back and forth, right? Or you can just stay right here. It's okay. I'm just giving you lots of options and kind of looking silly up here while I do it. But <laughs> let's try the other leg. And then you take notice in your body, is one leg easier than the other? Does it feel different? Maybe we work on, maybe we have one leg that is kind of our go-to that we stand on all the time. Or we had an injury on it, we never 100% healed. Good. And again, you can take your arms up. You can be a windy tree or rotating, kind of doing different things to kind of challenge your balance a little bit. Good, good. It's kind of fun too. 
So airplane is another good, um, and some of you are probably ready for this. You're going to stand on one leg, and again, you can have the chair in front of you as you kind of lean forward and maybe try to lift your leg up. Can you balance here? And you can kind of touch down if you need to, or you can lift that leg all the way up and balance on that one leg like an airplane. So you can do what's the best position for you. This is so great. I'm going to grab a picture because we have a DMU DPT Facebook site. And you, I won't be able to tell any of you individually, but it'll be, whoops, not a video. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So those are some of the balance exercises. And I can't remember, if you're over 65, it's definitely a component of something that we need to be doing. If you're under 65, you need to keep moving. And if, you ch if this was hard for you, then you need to add it in, okay? All right, so now we're going to do some strengthening. And so the big thing with this is that we can do sit to stand, because sometimes, depending upon your ability, that might be a good exercise. Or you can do a squat. So if sit to stand is too easy for you, you can just do a squat. But we're going to go ahead, go ahead and sit to stand. So go ahead. The big thing is, is that, yep, she's got like a straight back, and she's trying to, perfect. I can see you probably better. Yep, and then she's going to just power up through her legs and coming up. If you feel more comfortable with that chair, you can do your squat, and you're just kind of touching your bottom down and coming up. And, and you can integrate this into your busy work day. Can you do 30 seconds to sit to stand? And how many can you do? Can you go ahead and count? Can you do 20 of them? Maybe tomorrow you can do 19. Maybe it's 21. But you can continue to work on that sit to stand. If it's too hard to go all the way down, throw a pillow in your chair and just come up from there. Don't not do it. We can modify it so that it's right for your body. And if it's hard, that's okay, because that's an activity that will really help you get stronger. That will really improve your life. All right, great job. So that sit to stand is fantastic. If that's easy, grab, grab a weight. Uh, put, put some weight in a bag. Do a 20 pound sack of flour or something like that. Grab some dumbbells. Okay, that's one thing is we know with exercises that we're probably not loading and challenging ourselves enough. So make sure if it's easy, make it harder. Um, the other thing would be, oh, she is the, Jane does a great job with these V-sets. And that way I don't have to. So, <laughs> so you can start off. First option is just feet on the floor. So first option, you can go ahead and all sit down, feet on the floor, and just leaning back. So you can work on your abdominals and just lean back. You can get fancy and do the rotations like Jane's doing. And you can get really fancy and lift the legs up and hold it or, again, do the rotation. So she's working her core muscles here. And, again, if it's not right for your back, then don't. you can just go ahead and uh, have your feet on the ground. You can get real fancy and add in some Pilates and do some little pulsing of the arms. But again, you don't have to get on the floor. That's something that you can do in your chair or maybe uh, during your Zoom calls or <laughs> some of those things that you all have. Um, another thing would be just your overhead punch. We don't have weights for you today, but you can punch overhead like you're reaching. You can go uppercut. You can go across the body. You're going to go in many different motions because we don't just reach here and here, like we do at the gym, our lives are in many different motions. If you're standing, you can do a rotation with it. Um, you can add weights, and if it's upper body, it's probably a little bit lighter weights, and make sure you're not gonna irritate your neck as you punch. Cans of soup work great if you don't have weights. A water bottle works fantastic as well. Um, filling up your water bottle can get, and it's nice and easy to hold on to also. So that's a way um, 
you can kind of build up that muscle strength so that you can reach the, your coat out of the closet. You can reach your Christmas decorations off of the shelf above, any of those things. And then um, we're going to do standing heel raises. So again, you can use your chair for balance. And I'm a pelvic floor phys physical therapist, so I'm going to add a little extra to this one. So as you come up, you're going to lift your heels up. I want you to think about squeezing your legs tight, squeezing your abdominals, squeezing your butt, and your pelvic floor. So you're going to like you're going to stop the flow if you're going to the bathroom. So you're going to squeeze tight, and you're going to hold up there, and then slowly come back down. Oh, we're working so many muscles here. You're coming up, holding tight, squeezing everything, and then slowly back down. This is also a really good one to prevent or to kind of build up those muscles that help us so we don't fall. And slowly back down. Hmm, this would be a great exercise to do when you're brushing your teeth every day, right? If you could do that, my, my electric toothbrush goes for two minutes. That's a long time. You can do that while you're, you're doing your um, exercises. So really thinking about squeezing your glutes. The legs are tight and you're holding on for balance if you need to, because you're also doing strengthening here. If you don't need to hold on, that's fine. That's advanced. And you can do single leg, which is also very good. That kind of loads just that one side. Um, and you might see that one side is weaker than the other. It's a little harder to get the pelvic floor, the glutes, everything is tight when you do just one leg, but that might be your, your um, challenge to do it that way. You can mix it up. In the morning you do two, and at night you do one, right? So how many of these? How many should you do? Well, probably until you're tired, right? You're not going to just do 10 every day. If 10 is easy, then you need to do more. You need to grab weight. You need to make it harder. Um, okay, so bicep curls. So you can do, again, you can do bicep curls sitting down because that's going to be lifting those groceries, lifting your suitcase, lifting your kids. Hannah will soon be lifting a stroller and all of that stuff. <laughs> she's she's got to work on her biceps because that's a lot of work to be a mom. So you can um, do it standing. Also, you can do bound, and maybe you even do it with one leg if that's, if that's easy for you to kind of add that. So shoulder blades down and back, squeeze those shoulders together as you're doing your bicep curl. Oh, did we miss the plank? We did. We'll make sure and come back to get that. Somebody, a couple of them were like, yes, she forgot the plank. Yeah, and again, you can use your soup cans. You can do, um, you can watch TV. You can have your little weight sitting right by your, your uh, chair and do those. It's a good conversation piece, too, when somebody walks in and they see your weights. They <laughs> will likely ask you about it. So your plank. So you can do it from your tabletop. You can do it from your chair. Yeah, go ahead. So... <laughs> So you're going to have your legs back, and the thing that you really want to do is your legs are going to be tight. You're going to squeeze your bottom tight, and you're holding with your arms. So your body's in one nice straight line. So you don't, you can get down on the floor and do it like a yoga class and hold it here, or you can do it on the chair or, t or even your desk or your countertop here if that's um, a little bit of a modified position is easier. So you're going to try to hold that like 30 seconds or maybe even a minute. Think about pulling those shoulder blades down and back, holding real tight. You're, do, you're doing great. I don't know if anybody needs help, but we've got Katie and, and Maddie that can help if there's any uh, corrections that need to be made. The big thing is squeezing the legs in the bottom and pulling the belly button in. Yeah. So you don't want to be like a, what would that be, a seal? Yeah. Yep. You want to be a nice, yep. Don't drop the hips down. You're going to be nice in a straight line there. So that's your, that's your other core exercise. That's, that's really easy to do during a zoom meeting. If for all of you still working, um, 
All right, and then we're on to deadlifts. So this is an activity that you may see just in the gym, but we can do it, and it's very functional for us too. And so a deadlift, the big thing, and we pro you guys probably do need to help to make sure that we're doing um, hip hinging. So the first thing is you're just bending at the hips. So you're keeping your, sh you're keeping your chest lifted up and you're just bending at the hips. You might need to bend the knees just slightly too. So this might be your deadlift, just reaching down to your knees and back up, but trying to do it with your back nice and straight. You can even lift your head up so that you're keeping your back straight. Yeah, I mean, you, you can kind of work on hip mobility just by going forward and back. Um, if that's easy, you can go ahead and grab some weights, and you're going to keep your weights real close to the body as you're going down and lifting up. And I tell you what, you are much stronger than you think you are. How much weight do you think Miss Maddie can deadlift? 400? Okay, maybe not quite. She can deadlift 225 pounds. Yeah. So you're much stronger than you think you are. And so if you if if you like to go to the gym, I would make sure I would advise that you make sure you're doing it correctly before you start loading that much. But those are some activities that are very functional. That's picking up stuff. Um, working the back, working the legs, working the glutes. So those are very good exercises. Um, and then rows can be, um, you can grab your heavy purse, because I know we all stick a ton in our purse that we don't necessarily need. And you're going to lift those elbows right in by your side, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then back down. And squeezing together and back down. If you're sitting, you can maybe do it with one of those exercise bands and pull straight back. And use a band and pull back with resistance, like resistance on your, on your foot or something like that. Um, those are really easy to do when you're sitting down. Um, but those, those, that's a good exercise for those mid-back to kind of keep our posture nice and upright. Uh, then we have tri oh right, reverse lunge. So I like to do reverse lunge because it's a little bit easier on your knees. And so again, you can hold on to something and then you're gonna step back and then just a little bend. So it can be a little bend and then coming back up or you can do a big bend where you're going almost all the way down to the floor or you can go um, without holding on, okay? You can be holding on to your weights. So if you're stepping back, then that knee is, in, is all like, like your big toe, you can see, and your knee is on the outside of that, okay? That's one of the things that sometimes our knee likes to go in, and you're going to watch for that little cue that your knee does not go on the inside of your toe as you go back and step back in. And you can do one side and then the other. And what does this look a lot like? Does this look a lot like you're getting up from the floor? I mean, I hope none of us fall, but if we do, we need to be able to get up from the floor or to get up from cleaning or to pick something up or whatever. So that is a really good activity to work on. You don't have to go all the way down. It can be just a little lunge, and then you can get, um, as you get stronger, don't go down further. Sometimes people don't like to go to the gym. They just like to do stuff at home. Um, this is something that, you know, if you regularly do even these with some weights at home, you're going to get stronger and feel uh, all the benefits of exercise. Last strengthening exercise is going to be the tricep dips. And so you're going to be on a chair. It works better if you do have arms, but like arms on the chair, but if not, you can kind of do them from here. You're going to have your bottom off the edge just a little bit, and then those elbows come bend and then come back up. And you decide with your body how far you want to go down. If that hurts your shoulder, you don't have to go down so far. But those, again, are pretty easy things that you can do from your kitchen chair for your, like, little exercise class. If you have weights or those bands, 
you can also just push back is another option if you have a band and hold it and pull back down. So lots of options to do different exercises here. So we'll do a little stretching here at the end, but did, so far have you felt like you've been moving a little bit? Okay, good. So let's stretch just a little bit. We'll start, we'll do one last standing exercise. You're gonna stand up and we'll stretch your calves. So you can use the chair in front of you, have your heel down and kind of lean forward. You can show them on the chair, probably the other side. No, the, we're stretching calves. So here, we'll just do the calf stretch there. So, you're keeping, so she's keeping her heel down as she's leaning forward. So this is a great one you can do against the wall, you can do against your chair, um, and holding that. So our ankles need to be flexible so that we can catch ourselves. If we go to fall, we can catch ourselves, that we can have our foot come up when we're walking. Go ahead and switch legs, yeah. And so we don't fall also. Fantastic job. Hopefully that feels pretty good. We can go to a standing hip flexor stretch from here. You can keep the chair if you wish, and you're going to kind of do that lunge position, but the big thing is you're going to squeeze your bottom and tuck your, tuck your pelvis under so you're feeling this stretch right here in the front. And if we do a lot of sitting for any reason, but it says that we probably are sitting 9 to 11 hours a day, this is a great stretch to do. So maybe you stand up at your work desk or you stand up at the kitchen counter and you do a little bit of hip flexor stretching. It would feel good to you. And then you can switch to the other side. And try to keep your body upright and think about tucking that pelvis under. So you're gonna kinda squeeze the bottom to tuck it under and feel that stretch right here in the front. Good job. That's a great one. While we're standing, we're gonna do a little adductor stretch. You're gonna have your legs out wide and you can kind of lean. So this is my teapot exercise. You're gonna take your pelvis and you're gonna tip it like a teapot and you should feel it on the inside of this leg. This is one that a lot of times we don't stretch, but you can kind of feel that tight muscle going from your pubic bone down to your knee. And then you can stretch to the other side. If you don't feel much of a stretch there, have a wider stance. And then you can kind of get down in that stretch a little bit more. So how long should we hold a stretch? We're not, um, we should hold a stretch 20 to 30 seconds and kind of just relax into it. Take some deep breaths and kind of relax into it. And uh, if there's a target area that's really tight, you might want to do that a couple times a day, just kind of throughout the day. All right, so quad stretching can be hard if you can grab your shoelaces, grab your pants, or Jane will show you how you can do it off the chair. Even if you have your, your knee on the chair and then kind of lean forward, that might be enough of a stretch to get through that front, front leg muscle. If you can, you're trying to have your knee straight down towards the floor. Sometimes we kind of get out here. So trying to keep that knee straight to the floor. And then again, if you squeeze your bottom, it's gonna stretch that quad a little bit more. And you can switch to the other side if you haven't done that yet. Good. You can also do just a back extension because if we sit so much, especially in our nice comfy chairs or with our computers, we're kind of rolled forward. So we're going to try to kind of support your back, shoulders rolled back as you lift your chest up and kind of do a little bit of a uh, extension or opening up your chest. You can also do it just sitting and you can do that as a sitting exercise as a little break. So it can be here. It can also be with your hands overhead and kind of sitting and arching back to kind of open up that chest. So that's a nice stretch. If some of us as we age, we are more risk for osteoporosis. So again, getting that mobility in our back is important. So this is a good stretch for that too. And then we did our tricep exercise. So if you can, you can lift up overhead 
and kind of stretch your shoulders, stretch your triceps. Good. Then let's go ahead and have you sit down again. We'll do two other leg stretches sitting. And one of them is a hip hinge. I can show it. So again, with that hip hinge, you're going to have your leg out, toe back, and your back is straight. I'm going to take the one so you can see. So your back is straight as you lean forward, and you should feel that stretch back behind your leg. So again, that's kind of a nice, easy one to do while you're sitting. You can be in your kitchen chair or your office chair. You can't hear you back here. Oh, he took your microphone off. Oh, sorry. Took my microphone off. Okay, so your, your leg is straight, your back is straight, and you're leaning straight forward to kind of get a good stretch there through the hamstrings or that back of your leg. And go ahead and switch to the other side if you haven't already. This might also be a little bit of a calf stretch if you're really tight down into your calf muscles. Sometimes we have knee pain and it's really our calf muscles that are real tight. And then the last stretch, we're going to do a piriformis stretch, which is dropping our leg across. And then she can kind of sit up tall and kind of push that knee down. And that's just a nice stretch into your hip also. And if that doesn't, if you've had a knee replacement or your hips don't like that, that's fine. You don't have to do it. It's just an option. Some people really feel that that's a nice stretch for them. So... Go ahead and do the other side, and then we'll... So as you're finishing up stretching, I'm just going to talk to you about... We do have some active adult exercise classes where Jane and Sharon... Uh, Sharon is one of the PTAs, or the physical therapy assistants that work with us. They do the active adult exercises within our clinic, which is up on the eighth floor. The most beautiful view over Des Moines that you're going to see in an exercise class. And it's Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 11.45. We have yoga on Mondays. And the, if you don't like to get out, we also offer a virtual option. So you can do it through Zoom. Um, and we have at least half the class that does it through Zoom. Um, and so you, you can do the class from home. Uh, because we want to promote activity, uh, we're going to give you a 50% off discount of that for the month. So um, you can sign up at any time, and then the code is MINIMED, and it's a 50% off. So if you're interested in something like that, there's the QR code you can register. Jane can help you register today, or you can call the clinic number, that 271 17, 17 to register if that's something you're interested in. So there's these kind of exercises. It's kind of like an intermittent type of class. We also have classes at our West Des Moines Clinic, which is at the RecPlex, the Mid-American RecPlex. And that is at 6 to 7 in the morning. That's called Lifestyle Readiness. Um, and they also have weight equipment. So they have more of a gym type of, of equipment there. And they have it in the afternoon um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 3. So those are some other options if West Des Moines works better for you. So that's just some information about our classes. Um, so thank you, Miss Jane. If you have questions about that, we will be glad to help you. Yeah, it's great to have like active participants. Nice. Oh, yeah. Well, you can. So you can get up. That's a good, that's a good uh, function of strength, of, of getting up off the floor without using your hands. And so, well, if you're sitting down, then you should be able to get up without using your hands as you stand up. Look at you. Nice job. Yeah. That's actually one of the things we do every week in class is at the end is that we make sure that everybody can get up without using hands. But if that's not right for you, you can modify and you can use a chair and start working on that. 
lunge type position and using the chair to push up or your hand to push up. Um, but it's, it's really encouraging to see the growth and the strength of these ladies and the men. We have both men and women in the class that have been doing it for a couple of years. And th- we, were, we were shut down just a little bit during COVID. We put some exercises online during that time, but they, we started up again real quickly to get them moving again. Like I showed, you can get down. Usually, you're going to try to get into your hands and knees position. So if you fall, then you're going to try to crawl into that hands and knees position, crawl to a couch or something like that if you can. Otherwise, trying to get that leg up and pushing yourself into this position, you can use your hand here to try to push up. And usually, you have one leg that's stronger than the other one if you needed to get up from the middle of the floor. So that's, and that's why we work on those lunges in many different ways to get stronger. Because our main goal is to keep you independent living and keep you in your homes. As we, that's always the physical therapist's goal, <laughs> is to keep you living their best life and to keep you in your homes. Great. We've got just a couple more slides to kind of wrap up, and then I will take more questions. And I don't know if there's any online questions or not. No. no. Okay. 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 So just a couple of quick exercises. A lot of times in an older group, um, people ask about osteoporosis. So I just thought I would add a couple of exercises that would be like the five exercises. If you only did five things, because really sometimes we can only do five things. Um, the sit to stand or a squat, because we're loading our hips and our legs and our um, spine. And the single leg stand or the heel raise. And then that lunge type of exercise or the half kneel. And then this thoracic mobility can be on the ground over something or kind of like we talked about in the chair, reaching back, trying to keep our back strong that way or lying down. And they're just kind of trying to come up lying down. You don't have to do like a full yoga downward or upward dog type of position because if you have osteoporosis that's probably not going to work very well for your back but just but we should be able to be strong enough to be upright and standing so you're trying to work a little bit of back strength too so those can be five home program exercises now repetitions it's eight to twelve reps is going to be the ideal and two to three sets okay so that's kind of the the recommendation and we want you to do that sit to stand in the single leg squat, the half lunge, with the, the position that you can do it in with the greatest amount of strength. So by the end of three sets of eight to 12 reps, you should be tired. So if you're doing these and you're like, okay, that was easy, well then get some weights. Okay, so we have to challenge ourselves. That's the big thing. I just got back from a national conference, and that was the big overarching theme. You have to challenge your patients and do the exercise prescription dosage that's appropriate to the person. So the other thing is if you're a gym person, and there's a lot of, of adults of all ages that are very active, and they go to the gym. So these would be your top five gym exercises. would be the squat or the deadlift. You don't have to use the barbell. You can use free weights. You can use the machines. But again, it's loading the back and the hips to build up that bone. The deadlift, because it's also very functional. It's a complex movement, not just one body part, but using a lot of things at once. The leg press machine, some overhead presses. The Roman chair is one to get your back. So again, you're going to lift from that down position to lifting up. Most gyms have something like that. You can do it like over a Swiss ball, like one of those great big huge balls, and then you would just lift your back up and to use those muscles and then come back down. So something like that to use your your back. And then working on that single leg heel raise, and you can see they have a kettlebell, so they're kind of loading that as well. So three sets of 10 or eight to 12 reps, and again, or you can do five sets of five reps, so that's gonna be even more weight. And again, you should be a little bit tired by the time you get done with that. So summary of functional training, it has to be fun, it's unique to you. Determine what that training for life is. What is your goal? What do you want to be able to continue to do? Thinking about compound movements over just the isolated movement, kind of get more bang for your buck, working on those gold star exercises. 
We talked about the physical activity guidelines of 150 up to 300 minutes per week making sure we add two strength training sessions to our exercise, and if you're over 65, a balance activity. Kind of that motto of move more, sit less, kind of trying to integrate that into your lifestyle and trying to, if you are sitting for a prolonged period of time, watching TV, working, whatever, then just think about getting up at those commercials. Do 30 seconds of sit to stand. Go walk to the down the hall. You can get a lot more activity with that. So our goal of 7,000 steps a day. If you're sedentary or novice, definitely starting at a lower intensity and learning how to progress and gradually increase it. It's also really important to make sure you're doing it and help. You might need a professional like a rehab, PT, OT, uh, personal trainer, somebody to help you do it correctly so you don't get injured. But um, if you feel comfortable in doing that, definitely uh, there's great gains and big lifestyle changes that can happen with starting to move more. And then we've talked about that greatest skeletal benefit from that progressive training, that it has to be progressive. You can't just do three sets of 10 the same weight forever. Um, in my exercise classes, everyone's like, what weights do we need? Do we need light, heavy, or medium? And I'm like, do I ever tell you to get light weights? No. <laughs> we might do less reps, but you're always going to go medium to heavy because we want to load those muscles. And then we talked about the reps. And then in summary, you're going to keep moving because I want you to live your best life, whatever that is. So with that, are there any questions? Yes. Well, that's going to depend on you. For me, a medium weight is 212 pounds. Oh, I'm sorry. Her question was, what weight is a medium weight? And so it kind of depends what you're doing, if you're going to be doing lower body stuff or upper body and, and kind of what's progressive for you. I want perfect form first, but by the end of that rep, you should be getting tired. So it's okay if your goal is to do 12 and then you're like, I'm really tired by eight, then that was the perfect amount of weight for you. If you get to 12 and you're like, I could really do five more of these, then mm, maybe you should do a little bit more. Yeah. Any other questions? I I surely didn't cover the material that clearly. I know that there's questions. <laughs> yeah. If I can summarize a question, because I have to repeat it for online, what is the difference or what is the correlation between balance and strength and, and then aging and how that changes? And um, I think the big thing is as we age, we stop moving through many different patterns. Um, a lot of times people will say, I was, I, I was very active and I did so much until I retired and then I started sitting in home more, and you're not getting out and moving so much. But So I, I would say that it is partially that we are not moving in the multiple different planes um, of motion, that that can kind of decrease our balance. Um, but strength definitely does have a big, a big difference with that. So when we have people at a high risk of falls, muscle groups that we really focus working on are the calf muscles and the leg muscles and the core. Because if you go to lose your balance, my, my calf muscles have to contract to pull me back up, but my glutes also have to contract and my core to kind of adjust for that. So that's why you're, if you're stronger with those, you're going to be able to adapt to that a little bit better. So that's kind of the strength component. Um, and then obviously the sit to stand is a good way to measure the strength uh, with that. Does that make sense? Okay. And hydration, yes, we always, I mean, this is more physical activity, but the other big, huge thing is hydration, especially when we're talking about um, active adults, is that a lot of times our thirst, our, our uh, response to thirst kind of is, is decreased, and so we're just not drinking as much. And maybe we think, oh, if I drink more, I have to go pee more, and so then you stop drinking as much. But there's a definitely a cognitive decline, too, if you're working in the dehydrated 
state. And so I, that would be the other huge thing that I would emphasize is the hydration. So the question is, how much should I drink? And typically, it's half of your body weight. So it's half of your body weight in, um, is the kilograms. And so usually that's the weight. So thinking of if you weigh 150 pounds, it's probably going to be more like the 75 ounces. Now, that's total fluid for the day. Um, water, hopefully, is a large, proportion, a large portion of that. Yeah. For 150 minutes. So, so the question is about the physical activity guidelines of 150 minutes to 300. And so <coughs> that would be of moderate activity. Vigorous is like 75 minutes. But yeah, so your exercise routine should have a little bit of both in it. But you should get your heart rate up a little bit where you're breathing a little bit heavier. So it's not like you're just going through a, a walking in your house, just walking to the bathroom or walking, you know, strolling down the sidewalk. It should be a little bit faster pace or with an incline or something to kind of challenge you a little bit. Well, for vigorous, for vigorous, you are sucking wind. You should still be able to talk, but you're going to be sucking wind. Yeah, yep, for the vigorous level. Yep. But many people um, will walk, like they might be um, active at their jobs, walking back and forth like a teacher is walking around all the time, but that's not really ever increasing their heart rate, so you're not going to get the cardiovascular benefits of that. You have the steps, which is good. You're, not, you're moving more and sitting less, but you're not getting the cardiovascular benefits of, of that activity. Anything else? All right. Well, we'll stay out. We'll stay afterwards a little bit if you have questions. Um, and I guess thank you so much for coming and for participating in the mini medical school. If you um, have other questions, of course, we can be, I, I had it on the first page, is that we do, if you're interested in what our students are doing, what our alumni are doing, the great work that our faculty or the, the service projects that we're doing at DMU, if you're on social media, it's uh, Des Moines University or Des Moines University Clinic, or we also have one, DMU DPT, and that's specifically the activities that we're doing within our, our physical therapy program. So some people like to kind of be informed of these types of activities, and we usually post that on those uh, channels also. So you can certainly put that in there. Uh, all right, thank you.